Captain on the bridge. Alright Captains, we are back on the bridge and today we've got some things to go over from the Star Trek Online official Twitter page, so on screen. Yes, the Captains, before we get into this video, do us a favor, like the video, subscribe here to the YouTube bridge as we're always on the lookout for like-minded Captains where we can share our joy and love for all things Star Trek slash Star Trek Online. So, we got a blog to go over here in the Twitter feeds of Star Trek Online. And then there'll be something that I want to go over on another screen. But here we go. So captains now on PC can earn bonuses to their Admiralty missions this week. I don't know why, but it should have just been released with yesterday's. There's, it's a different time frame, but it's only by like a day. But here we go. So Admiralty bonus, captains on PC can earn bonuses to their Admiralty projects this week. So starting right now, we're launching the Admiralty Bonus events from February 2nd to the 9th. Your Admiralty missions will give out bonus rewards during the special events. You'll find that all of your assignments give out double campaign XP, allowing for faster progression, no matter whose missions you're completing. Get into good with Ferengi, serve the Federation, or the Klingon Empire, or help rebuild the Romulan Republic. In addition, all Tour of Duty missions will award bonus Dilithium Ore during this event. We hope you enjoy the special event. Captains, command your fleet to take to the stars. We just read that the other day. <laughs> and it's okay. So that is now happening also on PC, or as of this video will be today. We're releasing this in the morning of. This is recorded the day before. Now, I was sort of going to cover as well the 10 forward stream notes that had come because while we were streaming yesterday someone had brought to us an, an attention of a detail of something that they're working on or possibly working on so we're going to go over to stow reddit and go over the notes that was taken from this live stream done here on january 31st as always all credit goes to the sajuker for writing those notes. And of course, as always, we will drop our ECs as we go along. So, Cryptic has to test every ship they make to make sure it fits inside the breach. Kale remembers when the Ent J ew, came out and QA had to do a run of all the breach with five Enterprise Js. That is horrifying. Anyways, Cryptic is aware of the issues with fleet donations, and there's already some fixes made that will come out later this week. Now, the reason why I laid it, I waited a little bit to make this video is I was waiting for patch notes, because we might as well have gone over that while we're here, but there's none. But I bet you it's going to pop up right after. <laughs> but that's okay. Cryptic can use ships from the past Trek games if they remake the model themselves. Captains, we did a video of this already of ships that we want in game and hopefully they do find the time to get some of the ships that were requested not just from myself but from others especially the one that actually thomas marone likes which is the royal arc from star trek starfleet command because that does look like a pretty ship and i would love to see how that looks here in star trek online cryptic has to be careful about how many ships slash items one player can have a few years ago, someone on Champions found a bug that let them have way more characters than they should, and they had loaded up these characters with lots of items, which was causing the game to run slow slash crash for everyone. That is hilarious. Someone, one person caused all of that. Now that could speak to a lot of things, along with the things that we're going and experiencing here in Star Trek Online, the lack of servers. We need more servers. We really do. In my, That's just my humble opinion, though. Ja'ula and the Emperor were allowed to go free because the cryptic writing team believes Star Trek is not about story about punishment. It's a story about redemption. In Ja'ula's case, nothing she did was technically against the code of the Klingon Empire. So her being rewarded by the Empire makes sense. And Wesley is too powerful to throw into prison, so the team had him go on a spiritual journey to rediscover himself, which is a more fitting end to the character. 
So that's interesting and just kind of a way to sort of tie things off in a little bit of a bow there. Unfortunately, this does say that that's the end of Emperor Wesley. At least for now. Who, who knows? He can hopefully come back. But I do hope we get more voiceover from him because it just felt like as much as we got from him, and he did a lot, and I believe he did such great work, especially, especially during Fujiwara Effect. I love the line, I will end you. And then right before they leave, right, right when he harms Beverly, mommy. That, that was good. That was good. Klingon Recruit Rerun begins next month. So that's good for those who are new players, especially. That will be a chance to get a free ship. Kale will bring up Alien Gen for TOS to the team again. It's the last time he asked, he was told this TOS start is supposed to be TOS, not TAS, SNW, etc. Based. So that's why the race selection is what it is. Well, hopefully that actually bears something. Kale believes the 2023 event campaign will begin next month. So that's as of this. This is this was done in January, so February. So hopefully we'll find it to start this month and get more info as well. And you know, captains, we will do our best to cover that. Disc and Dorians are still being worked on here and there when the team has time. So this is coming soon, TM. Cryptic was able to revamp the old Klingon fashion missions while also putting out the new year of Klingon missions. At the same time, because all the staff developed for the year of Klingon could be easily used in the Klingon faction mission revamps. And the other changes were so small it was easy for a dev team to do them at the same time. The removed Klingon war missions need a lot more work because they're older and don't have as many assets that can be easily replaced slash reused for the newer content. Kale believes that the task of remastering them has become more daunting in the team's mind due to what it could involve. Says he will talk to Gerard again about it. Or Jared. Gerard. I don't know. <laughs> what am I reading? A Klingon name? Jared. Jeez. See if they can get someone to really push it. Kale believes they should spend a season on remastering them, but he knows Al and Paul already have the next like two years worth of updates planned out for the next arc that we've gotten a tease for, referring to the cutscene at the end of the Terran arc. So Kale doesn't know where they would fit a remaster in, would likely have to push something else back to fit it in, which he's all for, but it depends. So this is, uh, this is very interesting. Two years worth of updates planned out already. Now, from what I have kept sort of mentioning before, Cryptic, and this is from Al's actual words when he was on Q stream, that they plan about a year ahead. But now they got two years worth. So that's very interesting to hear that they're already that far out. So our predictions that last year, the saying that there's th at least three years left in this game. Well, there you go. That answers that. So, and spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. We know then that the next arc is going to involve Borg and probably the Terran still. And I did mention that that's most likely where we're going is more Borg. So I'm kind of excited for that. We like pews in the Borgs. We really do. No console specific updates, overhauls planned. Kale knows Travis is working on making the fleet donation system on the console better. Cryptic was talking about new lifetime sub ships the other day, not guaranteed to happen. So oof, that would be interesting to see what we get. I feel that it would be especially more worth it for them to just plug in a ship here in the LTS because of the age of the game. Yes, you get essentially what? Seven ships for that, but, or any, that doesn't even include the shuttles, but it would make it worth more and more enticing, especially for newer players thinking that this game is too old. That could tip the scale and have them right off the bat start four new characters. And of course, start investing time here in Star Trek Online. When asked about better controller support on Steam Deck, Kale says Cryptic isn't officially supporting any of their products on Steam Deck, though hopefully they can get something there. Interesting. 
There have been conversations about moving stuff from the Infinity Box into the Phoenix Boxes. Don't know if slash when that is going to happen. This should happen regardless because there is some useless thing there in the Infinity Box. But don't put in the Phoenix Box things that are like, you know, bonus pools. Like, come on, let's let's get some good things there. Let's revamp the Phoenix boxes so that it's actually worth it, especially for longer players and newer, to be able to use that Dilithium and help that Dil X. Has been talked about adding advanced slash elite versions of the newer TFOs. Kale needs to talk to the design designers about that again. Most of the time, the advanced elite versions already exist, but just haven't been implemented for whatever reason. I don't, again, I don't know why. That's just, I mean, a mission that they do, that they just rolled out, the Fujiwara effect, that has difficulties, settings to it. You set them to either normal, adventure, hard. Don't know why it's that difficult to implement this, especially if they already exist. Operation Wolf would be great. I mean, I don't really care either which way. I have fun with it regardless, but especially to those who are wanting to test their builds, that should be something that they no reason have to hold back. There's been talk about skill misfire issues. However, when people report that there's little details about what skills are misfiring, Kale asks for people to list the skills that are misfiring in the chat. Kale mentions it seems like lag issue, which are really hard to figure slash diagnose. I ran into this the other night, actually last night as of this recording where I tried, I don't know how many times we were in ISE or ISA, I think E, and I was trying to click my DPRM. Nothing was happening. Absolutely nothing was happening. I stopped hitting spam bar. I stopped hitting anything so that I can just give it a chance to probably click. Still, it was not doing, it eventually did after I don't know, five seconds of trying, but that is an ongoing issue. And I, I guess it would be something really hard to kind of nip in the bud there. Cryptic has been talking about ways to fix the boss of Dino Universal Endeavor. No idea when a fix will be made, but it has been mentioned, mentioned eternally. What they're saying is there are, and this is <laughs> captains that know me, the boss battle zone has been one of my favorites. And it's where I gained a lot of my in-game resources. Even back then, when it started, the Voth Battlezone always had campers at the dino sites. I guess the only solution that I would have to suggest is that once the dinos appear, everyone gets transported to whatever point that they're at. So if they're in the city, right in the front of the entrance of the city. And you'd have to actually click the message saying uh, transport to the city or something like that so that everyone has a chance to get to the dino. The other thing is there is so much DACA in the ground that even if one, one person could take it down, like I remember one of my alts being able to take one down by, by themselves. It didn't, it wasn't instant, but by the time someone did get there, unfortunately my balls of lightning already actually killed the dino i what i usually do is just do enough damage but there was no one there helping me so but anyways I, I think that would be one solution i don't know what other else to try to make that somewhat viable because even yesterday when we we're doing the unidever i remember i what maybe 10 seconds right after the announcement came up that the voth dinosaurs were up i went to the outskirts and it was already down and that was me speeding there with the cat in the cat form. So hopefully they find a solution for that. Cryptic is going to talk about something on next week's stream that will hopefully make shields more effective. This is the one thing I wanted to kind of bring attention to because this is what was mentioned last night to me about this particular stream that raised an eyebrow. <laughs> I don't know what they could do because a lot of, like, if you just start with the skill tree, a lot of my, at least personally, my skill tree is spec into hull sort of resistance. Yes, there's shields there, but shields go down so fast because of the Borg, especially when you're fighting the Borg, that 
by the time my shields are down and that I have those resistances on my hull, I have enough DPS slash firepower to take them down. So it really doesn't matter. Now, I remember starting Star Trek Online, coming from Star Trek Starfleet Command, that I was actually putting power into the shields and trying to balance my power. Of course, that's not the case now because it's usually just put everything in weapons power if you have energy builds. Other than making them stupidly, stupidly strong and having them sort of maybe a setting, an a automatic sort of remodulating setting, especially against the Borg, it's, it's nice to have shields. Don't get me wrong. It's like one, two seconds of, of defense. But after that, it's, you know, usually your DPS takes over regardless. I would want to see what they come up with that balances the change of shields. To me, again, a newer player, I've seen a lot of players too, just put power into shields because they think that they need to do that to keep from dying. But then if they have energy weapons, they don't have enough juice in the energy weapons to kill the enemy. So it's, it's not a one layer fix. It's a multi-layer fix and or adjustment, I should say, not fix. Because shields do work to a certain extent, but instantly go bye-bye, especially against the Borg. So we'll have to wait and see what they say about that. I'm going to see if I can base the thumbnail something on shields, but... When you see this video cap, you'll know. Weapon visual slots are pretty much a pipe dream, which is weird. The way the game was originally coded, it's hard. They may be able to do something about it someday. I don't get this because it was already mentioned to me that back in the day with the same game, you were able to override your visuals. Just like how we can override our shield visuals. So hopefully they can find a way to make that happen. When asked about console captains getting the ability to switch between RPG and shooter mode, Kale said that sounds like a larger task, so maybe. So something on the list at the very bottom. No talks about doing a discovery recruitment event. Kale isn't sure about how many more recruitment events they may add. I think that means may add. Cryptic has talked about Xbox PS crossplay, but due to that not being allowed when Stow was first ported to consoles, the servers were set up in a way that makes that really hard. So not impossible, but just really hard. So it can possibly happen. And I think this would go a long way because I feel that the player base on both are really small, in my opinion, at least from my experience on PlayStation. If Cryptic ever ends up doing playable fighter squads, they would be the equivalent of a tier 6 ship since they would be no point otherwise. Yeah, I, I, I see that. Kale will ask about buffs, applying traits that shouldn't according to someone in chat. Without going into too much detail on how the system works, Kale mentioned Stowe does have a pity system in place. It isn't after X pulls, you are guaranteed the max prize, but your odds do increase. Now, Spencer, aka Casual SAB, knows that already and has made videos about that. I don't know why they don't release that information like they did for Neverwinter and or like any other games. But there you go, Captains. If you were wondering, there is some pity system in place, but still not a guarantee. Like, it would just be nice to know. And I don't know why it's so hard to release that information, especially if you release that information on another game that you actually own. The reason why there aren't a lot of Vulcan ships in Stowe is because there aren't that many Vulcan ships in canon. Someone asked why about why Stowe has so few Vulcan ships. Well, we do have the Dakir. We do have now the Cheval. And hopefully we will get that ship that we saw in Discovery in the 32nd century where they had a Vulcan-looking stealth ship, which looked pretty cool. Kind of a Tron outlook too. Unless they have a use for emissions, it's unlikely we will get the Sagan Bridge in Stowe. Oh, that hurt a little bit. Dang it. Kale doesn't know when a PS5 or Xbox X update will happen, but it is something people are working on. Interesting. Next story arc will be about the same length as the Terran Gambit arc, so it is about two years, just like what they said. They've already got planned it out. Kale will ask about the Terran Whip being made playable yes i got whipped a couple times there that was mm, that was a weird experience updating the older uniforms has been talked about 
just a matter of finding places for it on the schedule. Kale okay, will follow up with the team on any plans to reduce visual spam. This would go a long way. I really feel that this would go a long way with not only visual spam, but also just lag, in my opinion. There is no hard no on playable board cube spheres. The issue is solving the tech problems with flying board cubes and spheres, which is weird. You warp in. Okay, I've said this many times. You warp in, you're already facing straight and I can all you have to do is what they do with a Nidarian Defender have impulse trails nice and noticeable there should be no issue in my opinion now the other thing that they could do on Borg ships just like what they have on the console is have a reticule showing where you're going I, I don't know it, it, like, it's a shooter mode essentially that wherever your ship turns that's where it goes I don't know I don't think it's that hard of a solution to do. I think it's just money being left on the table, but maybe within the next two years, something's gonna happen because it is gonna be more concentrated on Borg. Hopefully. We'll pass on the Herald Sphere bug where command ships don't slash stop spawning early in the TFO. So captains, there you go. A bit of a longer video on this going over that, but I thought it would be interesting to kind of talk a little bit about all of these, but along with the shield stuff, and Borg, the upcoming Borg content that we'll be having here, which is interesting. Now we're going to go here just in case as of this video, they post a sort of patch notes in case for tomorrow PC. Nope, there is none. Okay, so there it is. There, it's just the bonus Admiralty mission starting on PC, which of course on Xbox and PlayStation already started there so captains there you go there's a video thought we again we would drop our ecs on that get the up to date for the admiralty for the pc and then go over some of our thoughts on the recent 10 forward stream captains before we go i'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you and greetings and welcome aboard to the new captains who've subscribed here to the youtube bridge i am thankful i am humbled and we're almost at 2k subscribers know that there will be a giveaway that we will do to give everyone a shot here on the youtube bridge to enter to win a ship but when we do that there will be a video announcement for us so look out for that captain so like the video comment below let us know what you're looking forward to in the upcoming arc in the sort of shield update and of course captain subscribe here to youtube bridge and we will leave it on this note Live long and prosper.